Hello everyone, welcome to Corporate Law Journal, A Drive for Sustainable Corporate World. This is Aditi and the judgment that we are going to discuss this week is Solochana Gupta and Others vs. RBG Enterprises Private Limited and Others. Now let's proceed with the factual matrix. The writ appeal in this case was filed by the respondents. Appealant are the shareholders of RBG Enterprises Private Limited. The company is a family enterprise and its management vests in the board of directors. Appealant stated that the company should hold its AGM every year as per the Companies Act 2013, but they failed to do so. Financial statements had to be laid before the AGM. Second respondent has not obtained approval from them or the above-mentioned majority shareholders on the financial statements for the year 2015-2016 and 2017-2018. The second respondent has either forged or has caused to be forged the signatures of the majority shareholders. It was found to do some related party transactions which was in contravention of the Companies Act 2013. The appealants have elaborated various instances of mismanagement of the company. The issues in this case are, first, whether the present writ petition is maintainable before the Honorable Supreme Court of India, second, whether the respondents have caused mismanagement and oppression, third, whether the statutory provisions have been violated relating to convening of the meetings. Now let's proceed towards the contentions from the side of the appealant. First, loan counsel for the appealants contended that the dispute is within the jurisdiction of Article 226 of the Constitution of India and hence maintainable. Second, challenge to the order of NCLT does not fall under the scope of Article 226. Third, take cognizance of the fact that a fraud has been committed by the respondents and hence punishable under Companies Act 2013. Fourth, the document submitted before the court and the appeal was also pending before the National Company Law Appeal and Tribunal was factually incorrect. Fifth, Grant of interim order was opposed. Tensions from the side of respondent. First, learned counsel for respondent contended that no prejudice has been caused to the appealants in any manner due to impunged judgment and all that is done to make a temporary arrangement to ensure that the functioning of the companies are not affected. Second, Further, the various instances of alleged mismanagement and misappropriation of funds related party transactions and violations are not correct. All transactions of the company are legally valid and can be examined by the National Company Law Tribunal. Third, after the AGM, at the behest of the fourth respondent who is sailing with the appealants, a claim was made that they have conducted an AGM and unilaterally had taken a decision to remove the second petitioner from the post of managing director. Fourth, the writ petition under Article 226 of the Constitution of India was filed in view of the judgment of this court. Even if there existed an alternate remedy, it could not have been exercised during COVID period. Fifth, mere availability of another alternate remedy does not mean that the writ petition has to be dismissed. It is true that by mistake, National Company Law Tribunal was not arrayed as a party in the writ petition, but certainly it is not a fatal mistake and National Company Law Tribunal could be implemented at a later stage. In this case, it was held that Writ petition filed under Article 226 of the Constitution of India can be for the enforcement of fundamental rights or for any other purpose. There is no pleadings or materials to substantiate that the appealants are discharging public duties or public functions and thus 
amenable to writ jurisdiction under Article 226 of the Constitution of India. The division bench added that in the instant case where a single judge bench had previously entertained the petition Y226, it was held by the bench of the High Court that the single judge bench ought not to have entertained the writ petition nor passed the interim order. The company petitions 9 in number were pending before the National Company Law Tribunal. In the impunched order itself, the National Company Law Tribunal refers to the prayers in the company petitions and posed the matter for hearing of the interim application. The division bench in the instant case stated that on the basis of numerous precedents that an order of tribunal cannot be challenged under Article 226, the court also noted that the dispute was essentially in the nature of a civil dispute with no state or its instrumentalities or any public authority being involved. Also, there was an alternate remedy available in the form of appeal to the National Company Law Appeal and Tribunal.